Come on, life is in the power of your tongue. Come on, raise it up, raise it up, raise it up, raise it up. Hallelujah, it's the highest praise. Hallelujah, it's the highest praise. Hallelujah, Father, infiltrate this place. Move by your spirit, release your glory, release your power, release healing, release understanding. Whatever weight might be on the back of your people, I decree and declare the weight is coming off now. You can get your breakthrough now. You can get your healing now. You can be healed now. Depression is over. Lack is over. Anxiety is over. Guilt is over. Shame is over. Pain is over. This is the dawning of a brand new day. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And I came to declare today, it's time for the joy of the Lord to rise up in you and be your strength. It's morning time. It's morning time. It's morning time. This is the day that everything changes. You will never be the same again. You will never be the same again. God has called you. He has chosen you for such a time as this. So rise up and take your place. Take your dominion. Take your authority. Take your power. Take your strength back. Take your power back. Take your love back. Take your family back. Take your money back. Take your health back. Take it because it's yours. Come on, raise it up in the house and shout unto God with the voice of triumph, with the voice of victory. Get uncomfortable. Do something you've never done before. Get free in the house because the Bible says when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, you shall receive power. It's time to take your power. Shout in the house. Hallelujah. And at this time, we want to welcome our online viewers. We come today and we welcome you to engage in the worship with us. Come on, come on. Open it up, open it up, open it up. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, if you don't know what to say, just say hallelujah. If you don't know what to do, just call on Jesus. I promise you, we're not here just to have another church service. We're here to be the conduits for Christ and use the power he's given us to change the world around us. Good things be the way they are because you are the way you are. And what one thing could you change that could change everything? I hope you would change your mind today. Open up your mouth and shout. Come on, come on, open up your mouth. Come on, come on, come on. This is the time to do it. This is the time to do it. Come on, death and life is in the power of your tongue. Raise up your voice and shout in this house. Walls to fall when you call his name. Demons tremble when you call his name. Shout in this house. Shout like your life depends on it. Shout for your mama. Shout for your daddy. Shout for your bloodline. Shout for your country. Shout for your community. Shout for this nation. Shout. Listen, listen, listen. I need you to understand something. Oftentimes we come to church and we get so accustomed to church that we don't realize from a scientific and psychological perspective that when you open your mouth, you are literally releasing frequencies into the air. And so if you want your atmosphere to change, it starts with the inside of you. If you want to see something happen, you've got to open your mouth because the Bible says in the book of Genesis, when he created the heavens and the earth, he opened his mouth. He released a frequency. He released a wave. You have 
that same power. You have that same authority. And because he left his spirit, that means he gave it to you. So come on, I don't want to push you too hard, but I need you to take your power and open your mouth and decree and declare the word of the Lord over this atmosphere. So again, Father, we bless you. You are good. You are holy. You are righteous. You are mighty. You are everything we need and more. Have your way. Open your mouth, y'all. This is the day the Lord has made, and I will, and I will, and I will. That means I'm making a conscious decision to bless the Lord. Bless Him with the clapping of your hands. Bless Him with your voice. Raise it up, 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 raise it up. Yeah, I feel your faith rising. I feel your faith rising. I feel your faith rising. Come on, come on. Itaka yanaboko shanda. Iyanaman soko yanda bahaya. Itaboko shanda baha. Iyanaman soko yanamansi. You're holy. You're holy. You're holy. You're holy. You're holy. You're holy. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your plan. Yes, Father. Yes, Father. We submit to you. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to move, but you're, you're literally right here. You're literally right here. I'm not up here just to be aggressive or yell or whatever, but there is a weight on me for the people of God. What the world needs today is us. We are the answer. We are the cure. We are the solution. It's us. What if you never opened your mouth? What if you never raised your hand? Do you know what would happen? So can you just take 30 more seconds and I'm moving and just open your mouth and just release something to it. I want you to be uncomfortable. It's supposed to be different. It's supposed to be new. God is doing a new thing. Behold, all things are new. So come on, come on, open your mouth. If you gotta sing something, sing something. If you gotta wave your hand, wave it. If you wanna get on your knees, get on your knees. This is why we come here. We've been quarantined and we are finally back in the Lord's house. We ought to have a greater level of appreciation for his presence and his understanding. Come on, don't take it for granted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Follow me. We worship you. We worship yep. you. We worship you. We worship yeah. you. Yeah. We worship you. 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 We Come on, drive it. Let's go. You. We worship you. We worship yeah. you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship you. We worship yeah. you. We worship 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 you.
will. Now listen, if you believe that, put your hands together and clap on it. Come on. Clap, 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 clap. Yeah. We worship you. Yeah. We worship. 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 Come on, with hands lifted high, can we say that together? We worship. We worship. We worship. We worship. Come on, say that. We worship. We worship. Let God hear you. We worship. We worship. Come on now, give God a big hand clap this morning because he is good, because he is true, because he is a true and living God. He is the light. God is everything that we need. Can we just give him a praise that is worthy to him? I need every mouth to proclaim the goodness of who he is. Every hand should be clapping. Every foot should be moving because we serve a great God, a God who is not stagnant, a God who is immovable. Come on. to you this morning and we just worship and adore you we thank you for who you are and we say god come and move in this place god come and move in this place come and move in this place i thank you god that there is shelter under your wings i thank you god that you are our refuge so we say thank you as we usher into worship just get into that place where you're just seeking God if you gotta close your eyes if you need to come down to the altar come on I want you to get out of your seat this morning hallelujah and just give God your best hallelujah this morning we're asking that he come and move in this place in the midst of everything that's going on God is still God and he's still good, so we thank you. Can we just lift up our hands? Can we lift up our voices to him?
wants to hear you say it. Come and move. We say yes to you. Everybody say your face our focus. Your face, your will we're wanting. We say yes. We say yes, Lord. Come on, give it your very best as glory invades us. As glory invades We're changed forever. We say yes, Lord, yes. We say yes, Lord. One more time. As glory. Come on, I dare you to fill this atmosphere with worship for him. 
I dare you to open up your mouth and worship the great God that we know him to be. God is not a silent mover. He's not a silent worker. When he steps into the room, everything shifts in the name of Jesus. So I dare you to shift this very atmosphere with your worship. to you this morning and we ask that you have your way in this place I thank you for the word that you have given Pastor Kim and let her do what only you have placed on the inside of her have your way in Jesus name amen today they're getting unstuck people that are broken you got a word mama people that are broken are finding their way again hopelessness is leaving fear doesn't know our address anger is leaving our hearts peace is captivating us Lord, we call forth a revival in our world, all over the world, globally, like we ain't never seen before. 
God, I pray today all throughout social media, all throughout Limitless Church families, all throughout our I Church, that God, by the time we get done today, that we're going to be walking in extreme forgiveness, anything that's holding us back. We're letting go of it today. We're going to live in joy. We're going to live in peace today in our hearts, in our families, in our homes. We say yes to you. Because if you did it before, you're going to do it again. But this time it's going to even be greater. I prophesy that this time it's even going to be greater. I see an upper room experience where the fire of God is taking place in your home right now. So Lord, we thank you today that you're moving. Thank you, Lord, that we're alive and well. We're not just alive and well, but God, we're thriving. What seems like a hopeless situation was you just setting us up. What seems like a panic attack was really a pushover, a praise. Our praise was on pause for a while, but God said, I'm amping it up a little bit. I, 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 I'm amping it up in your spirits. Things that have felt so heavy on you, it's breaking off of you right now. I dare you to get up and stand up in your living room. Stand up in your room. Stand up in your car. Get out of your car. Pull over on the side of the road and give God a pandemic praise. Give God a praise that moves mountains. just spoke to me that over 2,000 years ago here's what he said he said over 2,000 years ago there was a world full of turmoil and afraid and so full of fear even my own people were afraid and he said and during that time I was able on this day 2,000 years ago that I poured out a Holy Spirit and it was a comforter that came and he said and if I did it then I'm doing it again he said it only takes 120. It only takes a few people to come Just together in one mind, in one Just accord. Just a few. And he said, and watch me do it. Hold on, hold on. Come on, I am not out. I am not out. Hold on, hold on, hold on. God said, I am in the midst of this. Come on. What Satan meant for bad, I will turn it into good. And because this has all happened, this all happened at the end of this pandemic and people were thinking that oh yeah everything's going to come back together and then all of a sudden Satan came on the scene and tried to to, to detour your, your minds and, and bring fear into my people come on, mama. and the Lord said I will not have it. I will not if have I it. could take 120 and give them a power that would influence thousands in a day. Don't you think I can do it again? God said it's time for you to get out of your closets. It's time for you to quit shaking in your boots and wondering what's going to happen. What's going to happen? God said I'm happening. Come on, Mama. I am happening. Come on, Mama. I am happening. The power that I have will break you free from any pandemic, from any cancer, from anything that tries to come and manipulate and control you. Yes. And the Lord said, it is a spirit of manipulation. There's a spirit of manipulation that's trying to control the minds of the people. Come on, Mama. But the Holy Spirit, when it comes in, it takes over. The Lord says, it, it's for you now to work with Him. He will not make you submit. He will not make you submit. He is a gentleman. But the Lord said, it's time now. And this is the day that He has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hey! Yeah! Come on and say, I'm receiving. I'm receiving. A shift is happening. I'm receiving. I'm, it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. I'm not walking out of this pandemic worse off than when I walked in. I'm not walking in. I'm not walking out of this thing the same. Come on. I need to hear you. I need to hear you. 
Let God hear you this morning. Awakening. Father, we thank you for your presence. There's a sweet, sweet spirit. He's awakening some calling, some purposes, some things that you've let die. He is, today it's awakening in your belly. Today it's awakening in your belly. It's some things that you've been thinking was over. God said, I'm just getting started. I, I'm just getting started. You, you thought it was over, but really what was happening was I needed to set up for the next round. And the next round, you're going to walk into it with some power. So right now, I dare you, if you've got any pain, any hurt, any bitterness from the past, church hurt, ex hurt, people not celebrating you, leave it, leave it. You've got to leave it so you can pick up your next mantle. Don't let that weight hold you back. Anything in your spirit that isn't of God, come on online. Just drop in the comment area what you're leaving. What are you leaving? Come on, Limitless Church, what are you leaving? There's some of you don't even know what's going on because you're in the broccoli aisle. Every single time you start moving into another place, the enemy starts making you distracted. You got to be intentional in this season. You have to be intentional in this season. You have to be intentional. Father, we say yes. Yes. We're not just going to sing in this season. We're going to walk in this season. We're not just going to sing about breaking every chain and still being bound with chains. Oh, we're about to break those doggone chains off of our lives. We're not just going to walk in freedom and still be bound. We're not going to do that. We're not going to be the normal church. We are, we are crazy. That's what I see God saying. He is saying, in this next season, you are about to be crazy. The Mardi Gras of Pentecost. Talk about a whole Holy Ghost party, because a Holy Ghost party don't stop. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, repeat. Man, I feel it today, y'all. We're going to go ahead and take up our offering. Man, I'm telling you, this is a, this is the, this, come on, Teresa. This right here is the ground to sow in. All of you online, this is the ground to sow in. This is the ground that sow, to sow in. We're even trying to pay off our building during the pandemic. Just because I love to kick the punk devil in the teeth. Oh, you thought I was out? You watch me come back. My comeback game is strong. Do I got some comeback kids today? Yeah. So in order to give today, we've got several ways that you can give. You can give by our kiosk in the back. You can give by cash or check. And I am so excited to say our beautiful usherettes are here. We're going to get us some minutes, some ushers. You can text to give by going to 770-574-6844. You can give online by going to limitlesschurch.live. Right now, you can go to your Cash App and give by Cash App, My Limitless Church, or Venmo, My Limitless Church. This is good dirt. This is good seed. Come on online, y'all give, give, give. You know what? I'm just so proud of our church because Limitless Church ain't missed a beat, man. We ain't missing a beat. Y'all are, y'all are holding it down, man. <laughs> and I'm excited. So you can go ahead and come up and give it. You can lay it on the altar. And I got a sermon I got to get to. Yes, yes, yes. Praise and worship team, y'all did so good. My favorite musicians on the planet. Y'all bad, y'all bad, y'all bad. Good to see all my helps ministry back. Feels good, it feels good up in here. We welcome our online campus, our limitless. We started during the pandemic an online church. So now you can be connected to our community. You can do that by going to limitlesschurch.live to the connected button. 
and get connected. And we're going to be having church every Sunday because that pandemic can't touch us. Nah, 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 can't touch it. <laughs> Woo! Y'all may be seated. Thank you, musicians. Y'all, y'all, just, y'all just bad, bad, bad. Father, we thank you for every person that is given. Father, we thank you that it ain't just going to double, but it's going to quadruple. I believe that Limitless Church is walking into the greatest season of our life, not just as a church, but as families, as business owners. I just heard the Lord say some doors that have been closed in this season was just to set you up for the next. You thought it was devastation, but it was really a divine appointment. There's some closure that took place that needed to take place. And God is saying, you just watch what I'm about to do. Sometimes God has to close the door in order to set up for the next scene. If he wouldn't have closed the door, you wouldn't have moved. So, Father, we say yes to you. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Happy birthday, church. That's what this is all about. And and listen, it's not just in the church. It's all over the world because we are the church. But we are also, we believe in community. I don't know about y'all, but when I walked in here, I walked in with some butterflies in my spirit. You know what I'm saying? Because I am an extrovert. And I have not done well. I really have done very well. Because what happens when you get into a pandemic is it pushes you to a pushover. You're either going to find your hustle is holy, or you're going to walk out of this thing worse than you did walk into it. And today we're going to talk about Pentecost Sunday because the power of God is on the inside of you. And here's what I kept hearing. I got up this morning at 530, which is very early for me. And I got up and I was feeling excited in my spirit. And I I even told all my people, I said, man, I feel excitement in my belly, a little bit of nervousness like the prom. It's almost just like a, a pushover to that next level. You know what I'm saying? I feel it. I feel you move. You move a mountain. I'm not going to sing the whole service though. And here's what I heard God say. Do it now. It's going to happen. Keep going. Let me explain what Pentecost was. What is the true meaning? There's power in Pentecost. There's power in your authority. And I think that's what we're learning through this pandemic. Is that there's power in the name of Jesus. Our world is in a crazy place right now. It almost seems surreal. Does anybody else like watching the news and like, what in the world is going on? Like, it feels like we're not even in 2020, does it? I mean, the whole 2019, we're like, 2020 is our year. I don't know about y'all, but I want to throw the whole 2020 away. I want them to park and let me off the bus. You know what I'm saying? The crazy bus. But as I was laying in the bed praying last night and all this week as I'm just laying there watching Atlanta get torn to pieces and just praying and I'm reminded of so many times where things like this happen right before a great masterpiece is erected and we can't look at the natural we have to look through the spiritual and so I went and I looked up what is power because I believe we're finding power you're finding power online community see you thought what was going to take you out You're looking today thinking, I've been 13 weeks. It didn't take me out at all. How am I even making it? See, it's time to stop living in fear and realize that if you've made it this far, you're going to make it all the way. Right? It's almost like now you did all of this afraid. If this pandemic was made, it made you really have to walk in the dark. And imagine if you finally say, I ain't got nothing to lose. But to find my power. I ain't got nothing to lose. I don't know what tomorrow holds. I don't know what next week holds. I preach 51 weeks out of the year all over the world. I've had every event canceled. Normally, the old Kim would have been like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Because I got staff, I got a church. But you know what I did? I rested. Because guess what? It doesn't take Jesus by surprise. I have to look back over my life and I have to see he ain't never left me. He ain't never forsaken me. I ain't never walked through a pandemic, but I walked through a divorce. It's like a pandemic. 
God's always protected me. So I went and I looked up power because God said that's what he's inserting today. There's some of y'all that have been literally feeling like you're crawling and you're, you're weighty. And God said, I'm a dispersing power. So I went and I looked up, what does, the, what does power mean? I looked up two different versions. And the true definition of power is this. It is our ability to make our own choices. That means either you're going to be pitiful or you're going to be powerful. There's some of y'all been pitiful forever. We're tired of seeing your pity. Pull your big girl panties up, your fruit of the looms, your Holy Ghost undergarments and praise your way through with your power well Kim I don't feel like I have any power it's because every day of your life you talk about I'm giving up I'm giving up you ain't giving up yet you still got to go to work and take care of your kids (laughs) but you're doing it giving up you're doing it with no power so the true definition of power is our ability to make our own choices sometimes power means taking something on or being forced to take something on, which we've all been forced. But sometimes it means choosing to let go of something. So our power is to move forward today on Pentecost Sunday. Some of y'all been stuck, scaredy cat, to move forward. But God is saying, I dare you to trust me even if you can't trace me. And let go. So power is not only moving forward, but it's also letting go. See, why do we always go back to what's comfortable, Pastor? Why do we always go back to what's comfortable when what we lost or what we're staring at, we don't even like? They don't even treat you nice. You hated your job. And God just gave you a chance to get unemployment. (laughs) That was a free seed. You know what I'm saying? The, 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 the Bible says that he's working all things together for your good. So instead of being fearful, realize he's taking a whole bunch of care of you, even if you don't like how he's doing it. I had to realize that, Leandria. I had to realize that most of the time God moved. I see you move. You, I didn't see that moving whenever I was stuck. But until I had the power to get up and walk out of that thing, I got, a, I got the power to hold that remote control and turn it off. I don't even see nothing going on downtown. Why? Because I'm too busy on my knees. I'm not panning into it. I'm not scared of it. I'm praising my way through. Why? Because I know that there's power in my body. So sometimes that means letting go. But today we're letting go of some things that we need to let go of. And we're picking up and walking in things that we cannot see. Sometimes power means standing strong. Even when everybody around you is weak. See, I believe what God's doing in this season is he's raising up people that everybody, nobody ever looked at. He's raising up some because we're all on the same playing field. So basically what he's doing is he's uh, showing a light on people that's been faithful in the little. And he's giving you much. That's what he's doing. I've watched in this pandemic, my whole team is soaring. Why? Because if I'm soaring, they should be soaring. You better get you some people around you that's going somewhere, baby. Because we're in a season where it's trickling down. It's trickling down. Why? Because there's a world that needs Jesus that are more hungry right now for God than they've ever been. Why? Because whenever they're coming a shaking or an earthquake we reach for something that feels like power where are they going to find the power in you so sometimes power means standing strong but sometimes it means choosing to step aside but power in the bible means it has a deeper meaning it has a deeper meaning than we can even imagine it's also frequently used in the book as description, you ready for this? Of strength of mind. Oh, I can't sleep. I see more people. I can't sleep. Is anybody else awake? You just want everybody to be as miserable as you. When some of us just laying up in our bed, you come up into this house and I got a Holy Ghost pistol. That you, you will leave my house because I'll be walking around. Shut down the door. I will be chasing you out of my house. Why? Because I know that there's power in my body. But see, if I never activate it, that's the key. So here's the key. It also frequently used in the book of description of strength and of mind, moral qualities of a person, power of his or her faith 
We can also meet a power meaning as an important feature of someone's nature. People come on my news feed all the time. What did you have for breakfast? Crack? I'm like, well, indeed I did. Holy Ghost Red Bull. Why? Because I've been to hell and I came out on fire. Because on Pentecost Sunday, I can stand up here and tell you, I'm back. Oh, you thought I was out. But baby, you were sleeping a long time. And here I come. Here I come. Here I Do I have some here I come people today that ain't scared to walk into your next? Wow! Here's the benefits of power. You ready for this? Here's the benefit of Pentecost power, baby. Less stress. Less stress. I'm too grateful to be hateful and too anointed to be stressed. I'm too blessed to be stressed. It also helps you. It gets your voice heard. Oh, let me, let me, let me do this again. Benefits of power is less stress. Which means power helps bring more control in your life. <gasps> People just follow you. I don't know why I'm following you, but I'm following you. I don't know why I'm watching you because I hate to be screamed at, but I just keep watching you. It lets your voice get heard when you've got power. See, with power, you get to have your voice heard and to influence decisions. <laughs> we got some people of God about to influence some decisions, baby. We're about to walk up in there with the Holy Ghost power and shift Atlanta, shift Cincinnati, shift Minneapolis, shift. You got to get your voice. With power, you get to have your voice heard. And it also creates likability. Well, I ain't got no friends. It's because you ain't got no power. Well, I ain't got no job. It's because you ain't got no power. You all crippled now. <laughs> Can somebody pray for me? Pray for yourself. I can't. Why do you think the enemy... Why, Keisha, does the enemy always try to take your voice? Why? Because the Bible says that life and death are in the power of your words. That means you've got to say something. But the power, the, the, the problem now is, is that the church is being divided because of racism. The church is being divided because I had church today and they didn't. We're losing the power. Instead of just letting everybody have their own faith, we all got an opinion. Why don't you keep your opinion in your pocket? And open your mouth and bring some people to Jesus. Why don't you stop being messy and get anointed? Why don't you stop sinning and find your freedom? Why don't you realize there's a heaven and there's a hell? And I know your heart wants to be troubled. But you better get your heart right. Why? Because there's a revival. There's a revival about to happen. It leads to more money. Power leads to more money. Po power just leads. Six years ago, I was at Bloomingdale's making $9 an hour doing makeup on people. Woo! Special ed my whole life. I still don't know where commas go. But I got five bestsellers. Why? Because I found my power. Because when I wanted to stay down, I got up. So let me break it down really. Whoa! Jesus. Acts 2. Let me read this really quickly so you know what Pentecost is. It's all about power. I got goosebumps, man. Whew. Acts 2. I'm going to read it really quickly. 1 through 21. It says, when the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly, from heaven... There came a sound like the rushing of a wind, a violent wind. Oh, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them the ability. That's what's wrong with our churches. We don't speak about the Holy Ghost. That's why we're falling apart, Mama. That's why we're falling apart as a nation. Why? Because you don't know your power. Because we tickle your feathers every Sunday. Oh, it's going to be, a, oh, you all right. Just stay there. Just stay. Oh, you need prayer? Call 1-800. Go, go prayer. And we'll pray for you. No, we're not teaching you that there's power in the name of Jesus. There's power to move mountains. There's power. Well, where's he at? Not at your house. Why? 
because you won't open your mouth and find the power. You've gotten comfortable in your brokenness. You've got offended at everything. Ooh. It says, now there were devout Jews from every nation. Ooh. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking. <laughs> In native language, I'm realizing there's so many more people that don't know Jesus following me than churchgoers. Why? Because my power makes the church folk nervous. And the world just wants whatever I got, man. I just know I, need, I, I can't be taught what you've got. I, I can't be taught it. Oh. It says, now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. God, bring us back together. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them uh, speaking. And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, <laughs> they even had haters. <laughs> they are filled with new wine. <laughs> See, when God's about to move you to another level, they're going to talk about you, but that's okay. They're going to end up celebrating you. You watch. They're going to see it change. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem. Let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these men are not drunk, as you suppose. For it is only 9 o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was happened. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, listen to me, y'all. In the last days, it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit. That's happening today. Upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. And your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even, even upon my slaves, both men and women women oh in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy and I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on earth blood and fire and smoky mist we ain't even gonna need smoke machines no more we gonna feel the power when we walk into a room everything's gonna change when we walk and don't you don't you want that blood and fire and smoky mist the sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord great and glorious day so today's Pentecost it's the birthday of the church and today we read of an amazing party that happened 2,000 years ago when the Holy Spirit came down and anointed the apostles with power. More than 3,000 people were saved that day. And the church began as a movement. Come on, somebody. We're about to have a movement. The church began to have a movement on this earth for the first time. Life has never been the same since. Like any good birthday party, there were presents. Gifts from God. The good thing about these birthday gifts is that they are the gifts that keep on giving. These gifts are still ours today, but we ain't tapped into them. Why? Because we got lazy. I don't want to get back up again. My body weighs so heavy. I don't want to forgive my ex. I don't want to forgive my, my balls. I don't want to forgive. Where's God at? When Mr. Floyd was laying there dying, where was God at? He was right there. These gifts are still ours today as we continue the ministry of the church of Jesus Christ in the world. So what are these gifts? I'm about to break it down fast. It can be explained in one acronym. P-O-W-E-R. You got the power. 
In your feet, you got the power. In your feet, you got the power in your left hand. You got the power in your right hand. You got the power in your belly. You got the power, baby, and it cannot be taken. It don't cost no money. You ain't got to give $9.33 to walk in it. All you got to do is open up your mouth and begin to decree, I need you, God. Use me. P is for prayers answered. Come on, y'all. Well, where's he at? I've been praying for 30 years. You weren't ready till now. See, you've been praying, but you ain't ready. On the day of Pentecost, the promise that Jesus made was fulfilled. Jesus instructed the apostles and the believers to wait in Jerusalem for the power of the Holy Spirit. He said this, this is what you have heard from me. For John baptized with water, but you, I wish I could have had a whole baptismal today. You wait, I'm going to give that devil a punk eye, black eye. You watch, I'm going to give me some pools out here on the ground. And as soon as I can, as soon as they watching me, so I got to be behaving. Huh? <laughs> if they weren't watching me, I would be out there with some pools and I'd be having all my leaders dunking you really good. I want people to be right around this church, Jonathan. I want them to be baptized. Well, I've already been baptized. Get baptized again. Leave everything before the pandemic in the water. Why? Because I want the power. Still today, God answers our prayers. God promises us goodness and mercy. The Lord promises never to leave us or forsake us. See, 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 see. God kept his promise, baby. Well, where's he at during this riot? He's right there doing this. I've given you free will. But when my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, I will open the doors that no man can shut. I will move heaven. But we in our houses scared to death. And I don't want y'all to get out in the pandemic. I don't want y'all to get out there. And listen, I, I will. I'll be getting my belt. Listen, I'm a whole mama. I'd be right out there in the front with my belt. It's getting every kid out there. Get in the house. But I can't be down there, but I'm praying. So they prayed for 40 days. Here's what happened. God kept his promise to give the apostles the Holy Spirit on Pentecost. But it took a while. Uh-huh. It took a while. They prayed for 40 days. They might have wondered, where's he at? Where's he at? Jesus had left and waiting is hard. Some of us have been praying for this thing to go. God's promises are often slow in coming to us as well. But we need to trust that God's timing is always right. Because he ain't going to let this pandemic happen and him not get the glory, honey. Oh, he, he ain't going to let this pandemic happen. And when we open our doors back up, there ain't, there'll be people wrapped around the building. When, I'm telling you something. God is not going to waste. Jesus had left and waiting is hard. So right now. You might be praying for COVID. You might be praying for the world. You might be troubled. But the Bible says, do not let your heart be troubled. You may be praying in the COVID-19 and asking God to end this terrible end pandemic and loss of life. I was hoping I'd be back in this church in Easter on Mother's Day. But that didn't happen. But God. There's been a revival that's taking place online. We're touching people we would have never touched if this pandemic wouldn't have happened. See, God is teaching the church right now to do new things, to learn technology, to appreciate the hard work of many who've been taken for granted. The first responders that have dedicated their life to saving. We've got to keep praying, church. God is faithful. Oh, F is for, F is for, I mean, P is for prayers answered. O is for other languages. What an amazing gift this was to get another language. Still today, God wants the good news to come into your house and be proclaimed. When you speak love, this is it. Other languages is love in this room. We've lost love. We don't know how to love our neighbors ourselves. 
When you speak love, it doesn't matter if you understand a foreign language. It communicates God in capital letters. W is for witness. On the day of Pentecost, the apostles not only received the gift of other languages, they were witnessed by their own experiences. They told the many people who were in Jerusalem about the works of Jesus Christ. What you're going through is personal. It's a personal thing that you're going through right now. And my question to you is, how are you going to come out of this thing? More of a worrier or a worshiper? Are you coming out of here with a praise in the pandemic? Are you coming out of here stuck and scared? Right? It's personal. Your personal witness is the most powerful thing you've got when it comes to growing your church, your life. To show that Christ is our Savior. If we would all do more of that, every pew in the world would be full. What does that mean? we got to tell our story. They're all watching you fall and you're over here bouncing back. They're saying, well, she shouldn't be bouncing back already. Well, guess what? It ain't you. Right? We have to be fearful sometimes. We are fearful sometimes. We don't want to offend people. We care more what people think about us than what God knows about us. You got to tell about God changing your situation. He is for empowerment. You can play with me, man. Empowerment goes along with witness. Prior to the day of Pentecost, the apostles were a group of fearful men. They hid in a locked room without a stay-at-home order. I was talking to a lady the other day that said, I ain't left my house in years because of a season. But God said, I'm bringing you out of the season that you're in brand new. Peter denied Jesus and all of them fled on the night of his arrest. Very few were at the cross to be with him when he died. And y'all mad. Because you thought they'd be your ride or dies. God said, I had to move them just like they did. I got to bring some power back in here. That's what he's saying. Now they came back with some power. Why? Because they got filled with the Holy Ghost. Still today, God empowers us with spiritual gifts to do the work of ministry, preaching, teaching. Prophetic gifts. I've learned how to prophesy during this pandemic. <laughs> I've been on prophetic flyers thinking I'm up there with the greatest prophets in the world. I'm thinking, all right, God, let's, let's do this. I'm about to get out there and prophesy. Don't you let me fall. You're going to look cray cray. <laughs> Just how I am. I'm ratchet with a lot of righteous. I'm going to do it. I ain't scared because I know you're working through me. So today, what is your spiritual gift? What are you called to do? You ain't got to be no preacher. You can be a janitor and change your world. One person can change the world. I'm proof. A little girl in Fayetteville, Georgia, 36 years old, failure, failure. I've made so many stupid mistakes. Why? Because I ain't scared. (laughs) And look what God can do. R is for rejection. P-O-W-E-R. The final gift might not seem like a gift at all, but R stands for rejection. At the speaking of tongues, some people laughed at the disciples and said they were drunk. They looked at the holiness of God and called it something profane. They rejected the message. Still today, people are dismissing the power of gospel as untrue, weak, and ineffective. Oh, we don't want to make people uncomfortable. I'm going to ask you to not speak. We don't want your neighbor to get uncomfortable. But when you go to the Braves game, we're like, why? You don't care about her or him. Why? Because the enemy has muted us for long enough. Because why? We care more what people think about us than what God knows about us. So here's the key. What should we do during the sad times? We got to stop sitting and stop complaining. And here's what we got to do in this next season. I dare you to say, hey, got nothing to do. You already lost your dignity. You already lost it. They already talking about you. Give them something to talk about. What? They could be like, how'd you come back? Because you didn't know my DNA was Jesus, baby. <laughs> so here's what you got to do. 
It says in Revelation 3.20, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, my voice and opens the door. See, some of y'all ain't heard him in a minute, but you're going to hear him today. If you hear my voice, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to keep praying. Even if you ain't getting your answer, even if you feel stuck, you're going to keep praying. You're going to keep walking. I'm going to keep renewing my mind. Every time the devil tries to come in, I'm going to kick his butt out. Oh, no, this spirit ain't of God. This is not God. This rejection feeling is not God. This fear feeling is not God. You're going to keep praying, keep walking, keep believing, and keep declaring. I'm the change. I'm the change. When you walk into a room, everything changes. We're walking into a season where you ain't even got to open your mouth. The glory follows you. The fire follows you. Why? Because you made up your mind on Pentecost Sunday. I've been miserable. I've been bitter. I've been angry. I've been, I've cried myself to sleep for the last time. I'm about to, you know, nothing's changed, but my attitude has. Nothing's changed in my life, but my attitude has changed. I decree and declare over my family. I cancel every plot, every plan, every scheme. The enemy has devised against me or my family members. And it ain't over. Because today, I'm opening my mouth. Because I got the power. God, I don't just want to be full of charisma and no power. I don't want people, I don't want a, a, a college degree or something in my, in my roster or just because I preach on big platforms to be who, who I'm known as. I, I want to be known that crazy woman. I, I don't know what's up with her, but she, she cray cray. And I can't stop being a part of whatever she's doing. Why? Because I want to be Jesus with skin on. I want to be Jesus with skin on. Does anybody else today say, God, you can use me. You can use me, God. You can use me. Anytime anything is overwhelming me, I'm going to lay it at your feet. Father, I plead the blood of Jesus over every person watching today. Lord, I thank you today. I prophesy today all throughout the airwaves, all throughout our church, that, Father, a shifting has taken place. Come on, lay hands on yourself. You got the same power that raised Jesus from the dead. Lay hands on your children. Lay hands on your spouse. Lay hands on your mind. Lay hands. Come on, lay hands. He's breaking some things off of you right this minute. Right this minute. There's a shift taken. I break fear. I break animosity. I break tension. I break racism. I break anger. I break heart break peace 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 lord we call a revival i need to hear you praying i need to hear you praying your child ain't never heard you pray i need them to hear you interceding for yourself Awakening, 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 awakening. Power, 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 power. Fire, 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 fall, fire, fall, fire, fall, fire, fall, fire, fall, fire, fall, fire, fall. We get rid of shame and guilt. Everybody repeat after me. Say, Father, forgive me for ever being in your way. Forgive me for holding on to anger and bitterness. Come on, repeat it. Hate. I know you say that vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. I'm going to give it to you today. It wasn't fair. It hurt like hell. But I am kicking hell back to hell where it belongs. And I'm telling hell to shut up in my life I'm breaking it I'm breaking it I'm breaking it say father make me your home give me peace give me joy give me long suffering give me kindness give me love and give me a do over And after you give me this do-over, 
I ain't going to do over what I did to get there. I'm going to use my power, and I'm about to change the trajectory of my life. I'm about to get all the gunk out of my life. I'm about to get it out. I'm breaking strongholds. I'm breaking generational curses off of me right now. On this Pentecostal Sunday, there's fire in my bones. There's fire in my home. There's fire in my car. There's fire. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Man, I love y'all so much. Amen. Amen. Was that good to you guys? Come on, did you guys feel that? I just want to make sure that we capture or invite everyone who hasn't accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior and who wants to activate the power that has been freely given to them. You online, you guys in the room, if you guys feel like you haven't been filled or you're, you're wanting the filling of the Holy Spirit, it is available to you right now now so i just want everybody just to lift up their hands and we're going to say it together online i want you to lift up your hands because something happens when we move something happens when we get into position so we say father i receive you as my lord and savior i res i know that you are my lord and savior i know that you sent your son to die on the cross for me and on the third day, you raised him up. And God, today, I receive the gift of your, of your spirit. I receive the feeling of your power. And I receive it as mine. And I operate in it. So God, have your way on the inside of me. Do what only you can do. And say what only you can say. And it's in Jesus' name. just rejoice for those who made the decision for the first time if you made the decision for the first time we want to welcome you into the kingdom and i need you to drop a one in the comments drop a one in the comments our team wants to connect with you we are so blessed that you guys joined us for pentecost sunday and we will be right back here again on wednesday at 7 p.m and sunday at 10 a.m and 12 p.m so lord we thank you we honor you and it's in jesus name that we pray.